Hello friends, welcome back to my forecast review, part 7, uh, for Q4 2022 Tesla earnings. I am walking you through my forecast thread that I tweeted out on November 20th. Let's check in with Loki, what's he up to? He is stretching. Let me move this camera a little bit so you can see the top of his head. There he is, stretching, turning, getting more comfortable in bed. You can keep an eye on him with the Loki cam uh, right here uh, below me. There, I'll push the camera back down again to get the contrast right. I've got the screen right behind him, which is very bright, so my autofocus has difficulty figuring out uh, exactly how to get the best shot of Loki for you there. Okay. So we left off in the previous video covering this chart about CEO Performance Awards, and I think I covered that one pretty successfully, so I'll try to hit the right button this time. There, that's the right button, or the right place to click. What's this next chart do? Well, it gives you just a general idea over time. Take a few steps back and look at the actuals and every bar on this chart is an actual except for the last one q4 of 2022 is my forecast of 25.8 percent automotive gross margin that's what i'm expecting in q4 i'm expecting for it to get a little bit worse um pri average revenue per vehicle probably won't go up in q4 it might come down a little uh, but the costs are probably going to go up because we're in a very inflationary market right now. Uh, costs are going up, right? Um, so it's it's reasonable to forecast that the costs will go up by a little bit. If the revenues don't go up too, then uh, you'll get a little bit of gross margin erosion. But 25.8 is still real good if you compare it against where Tesla was in 2018 or 2019 when it never hit that level. 2020 never hit that level, right? Uh, so Tesla was the beneficiary over several recent quarters of being uh, able to raise prices to limit the backlog. The backlog is the number of unfulfilled orders. Uh, people go place orders in the Tesla website uh, and they get quoted uh, wait time of six months or nine months or a year or whatever. Uh, and in order to keep that wait time from getting too long, Tesla was raising prices. What happens to your P&L when you do price increases like that? Well, it flows right through to the bottom line because there was no cost associated with that increase in revenue. You just took the price up, uh, so you get 100% flow through to the bottom line, which is fantastic. Uh, while the market lets you do that, um, it seems like we have reached the end of the market cycle when uh, Tesla can do that, and now Tesla is drawing those prices back down to where they were uh, before that started. So we're back down to uh, Q2 2021 levels, 25.9, which at the time was a record. That was a fantastic gross margin percentage uh, compared to all the quarters that came before it, right? That's where I'm forecasting uh, the gross margin percentage. What's the mountain range behind it? Uh, this is the average revenue per delivery. So that number uh, back in 2018 was dropping like a stone. Why? Because of mix. Because Model 3 was ramping up. And the more Model 3s Tesla sold, the more Model 3s had to be averaged into the formula for average revenue per delivery. So you sell more and more and more and more Model 3s, your average selling price is going to get closer and closer and closer to the Model 3's average selling price and farther away from the Model S and the Model X. Hope that makes sense. So that's what was driving this down. And then in 2020, Model Y started ramping up at a higher average selling price than Model 3. Uh, it's an SUV. It's a bigger vehicle. Tesla has more pricing power on that one to charge more for it. So uh, the dip uh, in ASP bottomed in Q1 of 2021 and has been coming up since. So that's what this chart is showing you. The, the initial purpose of this chart was to enforce 
something Zach Kirkhorn, Tesla's CFO, uh, stressed during an earnings call, which was that even though the revenue per vehicle was coming down, Tesla's gross margin percentage was going up. Uh, so that is not what you would expect to see happen. You would think that the lower your revenue per delivery goes, the worse your gross margin percentage would get. But uh, Tesla's gross margin percentage was trending up that whole time by finding cost efficiencies, by expanding production away from Fremont to Shanghai, where labor costs are a lot lower, um, doing a lot more local sourcing of parts uh, to get efficiencies on uh, cost and shipping, uh, paying less in tariffs, uh, those sorts of things, right? So really good uh, chart here illustrating Tesla's ability to manage uh, gross margin really effectively. And I think that's all I wanted to say in this video. Uh, so with that, I will check in on Loki. He is down for the count after breakfast this morning. And I'll say if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks to everyone who supports me, especially Kathy Kitchler and Halter Ferguson Financial, my executive producers, and I will see you in part eight.